popping. Catch her on the streets. You know she always popping. It's Candy B popping. Candy B popping. Candy B popping. Catch her on the streets. She popping. What's good? All right, y'all. It's your girl Candy B, and y'all see y'all popped up. Oh my guy, Kiwan Moses. Yes, y'all have seen. <laughs> He's a jokester. I've seen Kiwan grow, y'all. Let people know, like, what you do. I am a Kiwan Moses, uh, God fearing taxpayer, stand up comedian, actor, producer, entrepreneur. Lots of man of many talents, man of many facets. Okay, okay look at him. That resume, though. Lots of different things. <laughs> so, we go get straight to it, y'all. Y'all know how I do. So, with you doing comedy, what made you get into comedy? Comedy is my favorite thing to do. I love to make people laugh. Um, it was always my favorite thing to do as a kid. If you can make the adults laugh, nine times out of 10, you can get out of a whooping. <laughs> you can get out of a whooping. You can get out of a whooping. If you can make mama laugh, even if she get you a whooping, it ain't gonna be that bad, because you know, she, she's been chuckling. <laughs> and, and I found like, that was, if you can make somebody laugh. You good. You good, it opens up a lot of doors. Okay, mm -hmm. so speaking of your mom, Queen Cheryl, shout out to her. Yes. She's amazing. Did she influence you with getting into comedy, I guess? She she influenced my lashes by Bird, Cheryl Downey, Tap In, and Yoni yeah. Steen. If you need your vagina <laughs> replenished, rejuvenated, <laughs> My mother does Yoni steams as well as lashes. She does lots of things. Mm -hmm. She's also a woman of many talents and facets. It runs in the family. Um, my mother, she, she influenced me to be honest. She influenced me to be unapologetic in who I am. Okay. So she influenced the stand-up in me for me to be grounded in it and to do it. Don't be half-assed about it, to do it full throttle. So okay. She, she influenced a lot. That's the old school. My mama the same way. What's been a big milestone since you've been doing comedy? Um, lots of things, man. Um, shout out to um, Blackout ICT. Last year, um, that performance at Crown Uptown. Really good. That one right there, that was a huge Wichita milestone for me because it, it was a packed house. Mm -hmm. And um, it, was a, it was a great performance, a great reception. It really was. Um, Another one would be um, open up for folks like Mike Epps at the Orpheum, Bill Bellamy here at the Looney Bin Comedy Club, the only comedy club in the city. Right. You know what I mean? Just things like that, man. Just to whatever confirms to me that this wasn't an accident is a milestone. So what is it like meeting those celebrities? You've only been what, doing comedy for what, four years? Six now. Has it been six? Since 2014. I remember when he was just a little tadpole, y'all. I still know, got pictures. Didn't know nothing about nothing. I thought I did. <laughs> didn't know nothing about nothing. Still had Similac on my breath. But you see the beard is, is, is coming in. Glistening. Um, uh, so meeting those mainstream celebrities in comedy, what does that do to your soul? Like, how do you feel when you meet them? It's, it's an out-of-body experience. But what I got to remind myself when I meet any celebrity they put on their pants one leg at a time as me. And one thing I know about celebrities, they hate when you treat them differently. Right, right. They want you to treat them like regular folks. Like, um, I'm, I'm just capping about my resume right now. <laughs> but um, last year when DC Young Fly came here to the uh, Century, Century Two and I opened up for him, we were just chopping it up. We roasting each other. You know what I mean? Just doing, I'm just treating them like a regular folk. Next thing I know, we kicking back in the green room, talking about life, talking about church. You know what I mean? They, That's cool. They love that. You know what I mean? And they, when you are genuine to them, that gives them like, okay, they'll let their wall down. That's you know true. I mean? So it's, it's, and it's just another thing that just reminds you like, okay, I, I, I'm not doing this on accident. This is meant to happen. Damn you know Skippy. I mean? Yeah. Y'all hear him? I was thinking of Matt, DC Young Fly. You know, I went and seen him in Tulsa. For the 85 South show. Dying, okay. If y'all don't watch them, y'all need to. Hilarious. What avenues has comedy opened up for you? Like, have you been out of town? You get flewed out? Yeah, yeah, I mean, got lucky enough to go to different states, um, competitions, festivals. Um, I've gotten back into acting. Um, so I did theater in high school. Right. I uh, went to Northwest High School and um, Northwest? North yeah. Who goes to Northwest? You know, 
folks who are trying to dodge crime, <laughs> folks who are trying to get, parents who are trying to give their child a better life, put them in a better environment. Hey, Shout out to mom. Don't do Hollywood, man. You know what I mean? She moved us out west to get me away from the foolishness. And and that's where I got well versed in white people. You know what I mean? I, I got educated, I got my diploma, but I got very well versed in white. And um and you know what I mean, went to and, and that completely put me, took me out of my element, out of my comfort zone. Mm -hmm. And I had to learn and adapt to, to a lot of things. That's good. And um, and the first play I did there, ironically, was A Raisin in the Sun. Nice. I did that, I was like 15. And I played the, the African guy, the Joseph Asa guy. Uh -huh. guy and um, I went in the audition, I did the African impression. And the director was like, he put me to the side, he's like, yeah, you got this role, just so you know. <laughs> And I did it, and I did it there, and comedy now has led to other opportunities here. I've gotten back in the theater, yes. films, like with Devon Bray, shout out to the Bray yes. family. shout out Bray. And um, yeah, yeah, so it's So, so, so basically you've been staying down. Absolutely. For the craft. I love it. Who do you look up to in the comedy world? Um, Kevin Hart, of course. Okay. Um, because, the the mecca is huge. Um, Any they, old school? Oh huh? yeah, oh yeah. And I was gonna say a Dave Chappelle as well. Yes. One of the greatest of all time to do it. Real as fuck. Um, old school, of course, Richard Pryor. Yes. One of my favorites is Bernie Mac. Oh, I ain't scared of you, motherfuckers. Bernie Mac. And, yeah. And, and that was my mom's favorite comedian too. Okay. The, the first time I heard my great grandmother curse, God rest her soul. We was watching Kings of Comedy, mm -hmm. and Bernie Mac kept saying, some of them, you ugly some of them a bit. <laughs> my grandma was like, I've never heard of a some of them a bit. I've heard of a son of a, but a some. So Bernie Mac and him being fearless, man. Mm -hmm. He didn't care. I ain't scared of you, mother. He wasn't scared. He was yeah. fearless and, and unapologetic about who he was and what he Definitely. was saying. I think that's in life. You need to be unapologetic about who you are. A lot of people want to hide who they truly are just because of what others are going to say. Oh, yeah. And if you really stay true to you and be who you are, yeah. do you know how many people out there are going to rock with you? Mm -hmm. Just because you didn't kept it real and kept it. People say, man, you crazy. Mm -hmm. And I'm just saying and just doing me. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and and what be crazy is, I know you can attest to this too, just you walking in your truth and staying true to yourself or inspire other people oh, yeah. to do the same thing. You damn right. You know what I mean? It it can be good or bad, because some people feel like, oh, you can do it. I can probably do that same thing. It's like, no, that's not <laughs> what I'm trying to get you to think. But tap do. into what you like to do. Tap into what's for you. you right. You know what right. I mean? But, yes. but just stand true to you and what you're supposed to be doing. That inspires the next person. Damn right. I love Kiwan. OK, so locally, is there anybody that has inspired you locally that you would look up to as a comedian? Um, not just as a comedian, but um, my fellow my fellow comrades as well, like um, Uncle Bam. That's uh, my nigga. Mr. 316, Deion Day. Yes. Brandon Wynn, if he's a comedian I right know. now. He needs to get back into it. Brandon, he, if you're out there. He be on hiatus. I know, he, I know. He wears many hats as well. Mm -hmm. um, um, my other other white comedians as well, uh, Megan Welch. Okay. Uh, Jeremy Rush. Okay. Look up some of these people. They're very true, true to the game. Yeah. Um, I'm inspired by a lot of about a lot of local people as well because it's a lot. Of, it's a lot of great talent, here, but it's a lot of artists outside of comedy who inspire me, like you. <gasps> Candy B does a lot. <laughs> Thank she wears you. a lot of hats. She's Thank trying you. to. Put out, she puts out a lot of positive energy Thank into you. the community. I do. And this woman has reinvented herself. She has <laughs> evolved. You know what I mean? If you same way she she said she seen me as a little tadpole back in the day. I seen her as a little you know little little porcupine back in the day. She used to <laughs> she 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 didn't come a long way just as I have. We have grown. He right though. We've evolved. That's you true. know what I mean? Um, oh, so you. Thanks. <laughs> This is unscripted. Love is this. in the air and lots of love in everywhere. So give me the nights. We didn't play. 
<laughs> we didn't plan none of this. This is all organic. This is all organic For conversation. Real. And um But that's good. That yeah. you let people, you know, inspire you and keep you motivated and focused and you know. Samuel David. Okay, he, yes. He interviewed Samuel David as well. Very inspirational. Um, singers Ebony. Yes. He's just, naming a lot of good hitters right now. Just everybody who is take themselves seriously. They right. take they it's a lot of people in Wichita. Mm-hmm my hometown mm -hmm. um, who take their craft seriously mm -hmm. and all of those artists inspire me you know what i mean so if i reach out to you if i got something going on that means you inspire me in some kind of way you know what I'm saying? and uh, speaking of inspirations we are located in Voshe's cocktail lounge in the balcony yes y'all be up here chilling it's nice so um what's a dream you want to conquer in your career I want to have a Netflix special. Really? Like a series? A, a comedy or special. Comedy special. I want to have one, at least at least one hour special on Netflix. Mm -hmm. So that way all the ex-girlfriends can't escape me if they wanted to. Like somebody is going. So what would it, I mean, what would the special be? Would it be some stand-up? Would it be you doing like a skit? I mean. It'd be stand-up. I want a whole, I want to do a whole hour of stand-up comedy on Netflix. I want to have more than one. But if I can get one, that's. That's what I want to do, and um, wow, I want to yeah. I want to have a Netflix special one day, just an hour of your boy stand-up comedy, best I can do, and um, I want to get into acting as well, get a Golden Globe maybe. Look at you for my acting one day. I was yeah, them are some big goals right shoot, there. Shoot, shoot to the stars. You know? Yeah, he's going beyond the stars. He went to a whole nother galaxy. Yeah. Where do you plan on being in three years then? I definitely plan on being in Los Angeles, Hollywood. Um, I competed in some competitions there last year and won um, some festivals and performed and made established some great connections and some cats that I know out there they like hey man what, what is you waiting on you need to get out here see that's how they do me when I go to Dallas they like you need to come yes you know what I mean so I'm um, definitely plan on being in LA um, just further pursuing my dream and I definitely plan on being there so in three years count count on you you're gonna be in LA growing onto your Netflix big facts I'm proud of him big facts look at you go I always like to ask a little random question if I feel like I need to ask one. So has there ever been a time that you listened to your gut instinct and it was right? Yes. Insinuate. Insinuate um, a gut instinct. So like what was the scenario if you remember the Ooh. one that sticks out? When your gut tell you to cancel somebody. <laughs> That when the Nino Brown spirit comes over you and say cancel that person or situation, most of the time when I've done that, I've, I've been right. I've been right. But I, all jokes aside, I'm a I'm a God fearing man. Okay. Um, I'm in tune with my higher power, and there be tons of times where like a voice or your conscience or a spirit will come over and you, be True. like, hey, mm. don't do that. Yep. Or leave this establishment that's true and then you get home and that establishment is on the news you right and like oh i left just in the nick of time my gut told me to leave <laughs> good thing i left you know what uh, i mean so it's been t it's been tons of times wow. it's been flips out been tons of times where i should listen to my gut and you didn't and i didn't next and thing you know he was walking with a limp on the way home we ain't gonna insinuate that situation. But yeah, yeah, what she said, what she said, uh-huh. So go ahead and let the people know this Tom Pub. You said where they can find you at, what you got coming up. Um, you can find me on all social media platforms. Um, Kiwan Moses, K-E apostrophe J-U-A-N Moses. Instagram and Twitter is I am Kiwan Moses, no apostrophe. I am Kiwan Moses on Instagram and Twitter. Okay. Um, I'm on TikTok as well, K-Mo Jokes. Um, on YouTube as well. My stand-up is available on YouTube. Okay. Um, next thing I have coming up is here Vorshays. I will be headlining an event, um, an evening with Kiwan Moses and friends. Stand-up comedy from myself, 
other fads of entertainment, poetry, singing, rapping. Nice. It's just going to be a lot going on. October 15th, Thursday, here at Borchez. Okay. Doors open at 7. Tickets are $10. They are halfway sold. They're selling like hotcakes, people. Okay. So tap in. I will deliver them to you free of charge. Okay. Now, can we pay at the door? Yes, you can pay at the door, but prepare to be taxed <laughs> if you wait for the night of the show. Prepare to be taxed. So if you want to just get the $10, then just tap in in advance. In advance. And I will bring them to you or me to whatever. Well, I'm definitely going to get my ticket. Prepare <laughs> okay. to be taxed. I love KY, y'all. Prepare to be taxed. Well, thank you for letting me pull up on you. Y'all know how I do. I say popping up on people. It's your girl, Candy B. This is KY, y'all. We out. Love.